but I've got to make sure I get it at the right height. I don't want it way up here on my shoulder because this could create an entanglement hazard. So I'm going to pull it down, but then again, I don't want it down too far where it's kind of impeding me getting to my inflator hose itself, whether it's the inflator button, the exhaust button, or even where my low pressure inflator um, hose connection is. Because if I ever get a sticky inflator, I need to be able to disconnect it. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hanker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, by the time you guys get to see this video, I'll actually be down south in Cozumel, Mexico with my family. I'm taking my wife, my kids, and my, and my mother and father with me just for our family uh, yearly vacation, if you will. And we're going diving down there and hopefully we're going to have a lot of fun. But before we get down there, I got a certain piece of equipment that I need to modify because I need to add a tool to it. And what is that piece of gear? Well, it's my BC. Now you guys saw this recently in a video, but this is actually my open water uh, backplate wing. This is what I teach most of my recreational classes in. It's a soft plate from the Mars XR line, standard just one piece webbing. It's got a 22 pound bladder on it, just your standard setup for a back plate and wing. But what I really like about it is with it having a soft plate on it, it makes it very easy to travel with. And I did a video in the past on why I prefer a soft plate for travel just because I can actually roll this guy up and put it on a carry on if I need to. It's just really lightweight. But one of the things I personally like to do with backplate wings is always have two types of tools with me. And one of those tools is a line cutter. This is just a standard line cutter. This one, of course, is from the Mario's XR line as well. And they come in two different versions. So this is just a standard ceramic cutter here. It's got two different cutting, to or cutting blades on it. Uh, you can also get one that adjusts out, which I use on a lot of my public safety and on my salvage rigs. But this works fine for open water diving. But I also like to have an additional cutting tool with me. And the cutting tool of my choice, of course, is a set of shears. And if you go back and watch any of our videos, you'll see I've got a set of shears on just about every piece of equipment that I've got. Even my doubles, which I rarely wear, even has a set of shears on them. So I really believe in these. I've had to use them in the past. They make... Um, you know, really quick work of a wetsuit if you ever had to cut somebody out of a wetsuit in a rescue scenario, and I just really, really like them. Plus, say in a public safety or a salvage type situation, if I ever have to pull a tool out because it's truly an emergency, it doesn't really matter if I lose the tool at that point just because they're so cheap, they're so easy to replace. Now, the ones that I prefer come from Lifeguard Systems, and I've been purchasing um, shears from them for a very long time. They are a public safety diving company. We're a public safety diving company, and they have always treated us very well. So I actually really love their shears. There's nothing fancy about the shears, but what I do like about it is the actual holster. And we're going to take a quick look at the holster, and then I'm going to show you how I attach it to my system. So the cool thing about this is it's just a standard nylon holster here holds the shears, right? And if you do lose these, they rust or whatever, you toss them, they're cheap. You can pick these up very, very inexpensively. They're like five to 10 bucks, but your holster is gonna be attached to your BC, so you're really not gonna lose it. You just buy you another set of five, $10 shears and you're good to go. But all it does is simply go up in and you've got this Velcro strap that holds it in place. So if you're like me and you like to mount it upside down, whether it's on a waist strap or a shoulder strap, it makes it very easy to get to. Now, one of the things that I like about cutting tools or one of the places I like to put them is in a place that I can reach it with both hands. So when I'm wearing my equipment, if my line cutter is on my waist strap, I need to be able to get it to it with both hands. It's gonna be the exact same thing with this guy. Now, before I attach it, I need to get it in the right location for me. So to do that, I'm gonna to have to put my BC on here. And on all my other rigs, with the exception of my side mount rig, I have my shears mounted right here on my inflator hose but I've got to make sure I get it at the right height. I don't want it way up here on my shoulder because this could create an entanglement hazard. So I'm going to pull it down, but then again, I don't want it down too far where it's kind of impeding me getting to my inflator hose itself, whether it's the inflator button, the exhaust button, or even where my low pressure inflator um, hose 
connection is because if I ever get a sticky inflator, I need to be able to disconnect it. So for me personally, what I'm going to do is put it up on the inflator hose and I'm going to slide it up to where I make sure I've got plenty of room here for my connection. And then I want to make sure that I can get to it with either hand and I can practice taking it in and out if I need to. And one other quick cool trick about this is with these shears, it doesn't matter how thick your gloves in, you're going to have plenty of dexterity to get up in there. So I really like that. But I think about right here is going to be a good place. I'm about three to four inches up above my connection, and I'm not so far up here on my shoulder where I couldn't get to it the other hand. So I can actually use this little retain strap here as the marker for the top of it. So now that I know where it's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and lay the BC down, and I'm going to show you exactly how I attach this guy. All right, guys, so let me talk about the case really quick one more time just to show you some of the cool features. One of the cool things about this case, again, it has these Velcro straps on the back. So it's very easy if you want to attach it, say, horizontally to a waist strap, you can do that. If you want to do it vertically, you can either go straight to a shoulder strap, or in my case, I like to go to the inflator hose as well. But I'm actually going to use this hole that's already pre-burnt into the case itself as an additional security measure. So to do that, I, need, I want two zip ties, and I'm going to run them in opposite directions. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this one in, and then I will stick this one in going in the opposite direction. And I'll show you just briefly why that's important here, because we want to keep this guy from actually sliding up and down as well. So I got two zip ties, one going in one direction, one going in the other direction, just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up the Velcro straps on the back. They are double-sided Velcro, so you can actually put them in any orientation. It doesn't really matter. And I am going to lay the case down. I already know what my height is because I can use that retaining strap there for the top of the case. I've got everything positioned where I need it. I'm going to go ahead and secure the Velcro like so. We'll go ahead and do the top as well, secure the Velcro. And even though technically I could leave it there, the problem is, is as that Velcro kind of stretches, it will slide up and down the inflator hose, and I don't want it to do that. That's where these two zip ties come in. So all you've got to do, since you're running them in opposite directions, and you've got a couple options. You can actually run all the way around your webbing strap. I actually don't prefer to do that. So I'm going to go just around the inflator hose, like so. And I can use the grooves in here for the actual zip ties, and that way it doesn't damage in any way your inflator hose. So I'm gonna come up to that groove, and I'm gonna temporarily secure that one, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this zip tie, and just temporarily do it, because I wanna make sure I get the positioning just right before I secure it completely down. All right, so push that on through. The position's just right. Now, I know that it's right because I marked it with that retaining hose or that retaining strap, but you could always put the BCD back on, verify once again, and it's really not in the way because as my inflator hose comes up, I can still get to a D-ring here, so that makes it really cool. But I want to make sure also, as I do go to tighten this down, that I don't go too tight on the inflator hose, and I want to make sure that I also stay there in that groove. So I'm going to tighten that side down, tighten that side down, just keep checking, make sure you're not pinching in on that inflator hose in any way. Like so. And that's gonna keep it from actually sliding up and down. And I can actually slide it up just like that, separate those grooves out on both sides, and we should theoretically be good to go. Now, to cut off the excess, you can just get you a little set of nippers. It doesn't really matter which ones you use. I actually prefer these. They work great for mouthpieces as well and regulators because they're nice and flat. And I'm just going to go in here and cut off those two zip tie ends, the excess. And just like that, it will not slide up and down. It's easy to assess. Now, the final test is actually going to be to put it on and make sure it works the way we need it to. All right, guys, so now that I've got it attached, I'm just going to do one final fit test here to make sure everything's good. So I've got my shoulder straps. It is not low enough that it's going to impede me connecting or disconnecting my low-pressure inflator hose. It's not way up here creating an entanglement hazard, and it tends to be in the best place for me to reach it with either hand. Now, just to make sure the operation's good, I'm going to start with the right hand. I'm going to unvelcro, pull the shears out, and then if I need to reholster it, I can stick them back in very easily. Pull it up through the top. 
and secure it back down. Now I want to do the same thing with the other hand in the event that my right hand goes down. I can pull this one out. I can pull the shears out, use them if I need to, and then if I need to reholster for whatever reason, I can actually do that. Now once again, the cool thing about these shears, they are very, very inexpensive. If you lose them, you can replace them for like five to ten dollars. You can get a slightly more expensive brand or a version that is a titanium base versus just a stainless steel or an aluminum base. I believe these are just aluminum, but they're great. They're an additional cutting tool to say your line cutter or something like that. You can put it next to your line cutter if you want, but the shears from the lifeguard systems tend to be the best that works for us. All of our guys use them here and they really like them. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed uh, this video. I hope this was kind of educational. I hope it kind of opens your mind and gives you another idea of where you can store gear without it being any type of entanglement hazard. You know, when we clip things off, especially on our right D-ring here, like our flashlights, we want everything nice and secure. This is nice and secure. It's out of the way. There's no way really that I can get it entangled. And if I do, all I got to do is just disconnect it. It's going to pop out anyways. So it's a great system. But guys, if you did like the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you've got any questions on cutting tools, how to attach them, put me a comment down below and I'll try to help you out the best I can. But as always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.